industry, business, and management analysis are categories that we would classify as being the more qualitative parts of a credit assessment. At the business environment and the industry levels, some of the tools at our disposal include, but are not limited to, PESTEL and Porter's Five Forces. PESTEL is an acronym that stands for Political, Economic, Social, Technological, Environmental, and Legal. These categories represent factors that may create both risks and opportunities for a borrower based on trends or prevailing forces in the industry or the business environment. Porter's Five Forces is a model first published in the 1980s by Michael Porter, a now famous Harvard Business School professor and thought leader. It's a framework used to understand how competitive forces in an industry might influence its participants. Financial institutions usually subscribe to many industry research and data providers to help support their lenders' analysis here. Assessing the business itself involves analyzing its competitive position in order to understand how sustainable its advantages are or are not. Frameworks like Hax's Delta Model, Ansoff's Matrix, and SWOT, which stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats, are common tools to support company-level risk assessments. When it comes to management analysis, many lenders have proprietary interview-type questions, as well as evaluation scorecards to assess key management traits in areas like business and financial acumen, their approach to risk, and planning including their ability to make realistic projections, then to meet or exceed them. Assessing the business environment, the industry, the business itself, and the management team help to satisfy the conditions and the character C's of our 5 C's framework. Financial analysis is where we really start to get quantitative in the credit assessment process. This part is often called ratio analysis. But before we get into these ratios in any detail, let's look to understand the different categories. Broadly speaking, there are performance ratios and there are financial ratios. Performance ratios seek to help an analyst understand how profitable a company is and how efficiently it's being run. Financial ratios seek to help us understand the company's liquidity, its capital structure, and its ability to service its annual debt obligations. Profitability metrics relate to a firm's margin profile. Usually we consider gross margin, net margin, and some type of cash flow margin, often expressed using EBIT or EBITDA, which stands for Earnings Before Interest, Taxes, Depreciation, and Amortization. All other things being equal, higher profitability ratios are better. To evaluate efficiency, we look at turnover ratios, accounts receivable days, inventory days, and accounts payable days. These help an analyst understand a business's cash conversion cycle or working capital cycle. Commercial bankers often look to support their clients by providing credit support when there is a working capital funding gap. Once we calculate these metrics, we need to understand their context. One way to accomplish this is through trend analysis, where we look at the metrics year over year to understand if the borrower's performance and efficiency are improving, declining, or remaining stable. We also use these metrics to benchmark the company's performance against its industry peer group to get a sense of its relative performance. Are they better than, worse than, or in line with industry averages? Unusual trends and or relative performance gaps should help inform an analyst's line of questioning when conducting due diligence and management interviews. Where appropriate, we may also supplement performance analysis by using industry-specific metrics. These aren't necessarily credit-specific, and they aren't really transferable from industry to industry, but they help us understand the borrower's total performance picture. Examples include revenue per available seat mile for an airline, 
same store sales growth for a restaurant chain, or sales per square foot for a retailer. Financial ratios are how we seek to understand and evaluate a company's overall financial health. Liquidity speaks to a borrower's ability to cover current liabilities and obligations, those due in the current fiscal year, with its current assets. Common metrics include the current ratio and the quick ratio. Capital structure refers to the makeup of a company's funding sources. As we discussed earlier, assets are financed using a combination of liabilities and equity, or debt and equity. A capital structure with a higher proportion of debt is said to have high leverage, sometimes called gearing. Debt to equity is a pretty common ratio. Many lenders will also look at debt to tangible net worth, which is equity less assets that have no underlying tangible value in the denominator. Coverage metrics assess how easily a business can cover its annual interest or interest plus principal obligations using its annual operating cash flow. Common ratios include EBIT over interest, debt service coverage, often abbreviated to DSC, and fixed charge coverage, or FCC. All other things being equal, higher liquidity and coverage ratios and lower leverage ratios tend to correspond with a lower likelihood of default. But like performance metrics, we don't look at them in isolation. Credit professionals must conduct trend analysis as well as benchmarking against industry peers in order to paint a more complete picture of the borrower's financial health. Understanding a borrower's performance and financial ratios help to satisfy the capacity and the capital C's of our five C's framework. The final C to address here is collateral. As a general rule, any collateral is usually better than no collateral. However, and as you probably imagine, not all security is created equally. This is important because the desirability and the overall quality of physical assets being pledged as collateral will influence some important borrowing parameters. The first is loan to value, or LTV. If a borrower pledges cash as collateral, for example, they may get 100% loan to value, meaning dollar for dollar. Where if they pledge used equipment, they may only get 50% loan to value, or 50 cents on the dollar. A common tool used to understand and measure the desirability of an asset as collateral is the MAST framework. MAST asks, is the asset marketable, ascertainable, stable, and transferable? And if so, to what extent? Marketable implies there's an active secondary market, like stocks and bonds. If an asset's value is ascertainable, it means that many parties can agree upon its value, often by using a third-party appraiser. Think commercial real estate. Intellectual property, on the other hand, may not have an active secondary market, and its value depends largely on the ability of the party that possesses it to monetize it, making it inherently hard to value. Stability is important as well. After all, a lender doesn't want to extend 75% loan to value against an asset that could decrease in value by 50% in a week, leaving a collateral shortfall. This makes cryptocurrencies undesirable collateral for most traditional lenders. And finally, there's the asset's transferability, meaning how easy is it to transfer title? Physical machinery is generally marketable, ascertainable, and stable. But it may not be all that transferable if the borrower is a nickel miner and the equipment is at a remote mine site on a different continent. Any costs associated with realizing on physical inventory must be considered in the assessment of collateral value. As a general rule, the better an asset scores against the MAST framework, the more flexible and favorable the loan structure can be, including loan to value, amortization length, and often pricing too. 
Hi, welcome back. In this course, we discussed credit in specific detail, including some of the pros and cons of using debt to fund projects and initiatives. Now you should be able to define what credit is and how it's created. Identify some of the different career opportunities available to credit professionals. Compare different types of interest payments and loan characteristics to help inform an appropriate credit structure. Explain what capital expenditure, or CAPEX, is and how debt financing can support it. Explain the five C's of credit framework and how it informs risk assessments. And finally, identify the important qualitative and quantitative techniques, including key financial ratios used in the risk assessment process. This course is an important building block in your career journey, but if you want to explore commercial lending and other credit concepts in more detail, we encourage you to consider enrolling in CFI's CBCA program. It's been a pleasure learning with you. Good luck, and see you again soon.